blissful morning everyone. So, ang topic natin ngayon ay ang aking reflections at ang implication ng early intervention and teletherapy during COVID-19 era and update. Nina Stephen Hernandez and Maya Sharma. Let me share my topic for today. Early intervention and teletherapy during the COVID-19 era and update. So, ang uh, reflections, number one, parents and caregivers favored face-to-face -face early interview or EI service deliveries over teletherapy. However, clinicians' opinions on its efficacy and capacity to encourage goal completion in children target. Number two, teletherapy has emerged as a feasible means of service delivery, particularly in underserved areas as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Number three, by allowing parents, patients, and their healthcare providers to communicate more frequently and regularly, telehealth can help to improve the continuity of treatment. Number four, by decreasing the need for travel and lodging for patients and caregivers, teletherapy can aid with cost savings. Fifth, by enabling access to a patient's medical data and treatment plan, teletherapy can improve care coordination. Number six, specialists who might not be accessible in a patient's neighborhood can sometimes be reached more easily through teletherapy. Number seven, by shortening wait times and rescheduling visits, teletherapy can improve the effectiveness of care delivery. Number eight, Patients may find teletherapy more convenient because it allows them to receive treatment in the convenience of their homes. Number nine, more flexible appointment times and locations may be available with teletherapy. Number 10, the effectiveness of telemedicine is only partially supported by evidence. Thus, more research should be made regarding teletherapy. And implications in my practice as a teacher psychologist. Number one, responding service providers were overwhelmingly in favor of offering teletherapy as a service delivery option, particularly in light of its capacity to promote improved parental improvement or involvement in therapy sessions and the resulting increased caseload capacity that results from not having to drive from one home or service location to another. Second, the practice of telemedicine is unregulated, so the APA should create teletherapy regulations to fill this gap. Number three, there must be a clear procedure for protecting patient confidentiality because there are worries regarding the security and privacy of medical information exchange via teletherapy. Number four, before beginning teletherapy, a reliable internet provider and a high-quality equipment must be obtained because the teletherapy equipment utilized can have technical issues. Fifth, if telemedicine is only accessible to those who can afford it, there may be unequal access to care. As a result, teletherapy must be made accessible to all patients regardless of their socioeconomic status. Six, geographical limitations may make it more difficult for patients to access teletherapy, so a solution must be found between the patient and the therapist to get around these limitations. Seventh, our zone discrepancies between the patient and the caregiver may make it challenging to organize teletherapy. As a result, a mutually convenient R must be agreed upon. Eighth, communication between the patient and the therapist must be hampered by language problems. As a result, the patient and the therapist must seek the same language. The therapist may suggest that the patient see another therapist who is fluent in their language. Nine, the family must be present during therapy sessions for a holistic approach to therapy because there is a risk that teletherapy will cause social isolation. And then, further teletherapy research is required because there's only moderately strong evidence for its efficacy. So stay tuned sa aking pamigay na gold. And comment down below kung ano gusto niyo tabi. Have a great day!